Hey, this is Mick Angelo from the Mix Palace. I want to give you a walkthrough on how the Mix Palace was built and some of the high quality electronics that we use here. Okay, so one of the things that make the Mix Palace unique is our control room. Our control room was, is, was designed by Tom Hidley. It's perfectly symmetrical. Um, and um, we utilize an SSL console. And one of the things that makes this facility very special is the large monitors are mounted in eight tons of solid concrete. So one of the things that makes the Mix Palace very unique and one of the things that makes mixing your music and having your music mastered here at the Mix Palace very unique is we mix actually on a high quality mastering monitor system. Most people just mix on a pair of monitors. We actually mix your music on a pair of high quality mastering monitor systems uh, made by Ray Audio in Japan, a fellow by the name of Shoujo Kinoshita. And these monitors are flat from 15 hertz all the way up to 20,000 kilohertz. So by mixing your music on these monitors, we're able to really bring the best out of the files that you recorded in your house. Welcome to the Mix Palace Live Room, a room I'm very proud of. This room was designed by Tom Hidley. And as you can see, all the walls are not parallel at all. You could see the back wall is solid concrete here, flared back. The side walls are also solid concrete and they're flared out. The ceiling actually is on a, um, an angle and that flares up. Um, and one of the things that make this room very special is nothing is symmetrical. And so drums really sound incredible in this room. So this is the, basically how the drums sound in this room. One of the things that make the Mix Palace really unique is our digital headphone cue station. This is the live mix by Digital Audio Labs. Every musician in the room here will have their own headphone mixer. Um, this station contains two headphone mixes in one and you have control over 24 channels. This mixer also gives you the ability to have your own reverb, delay, echo in your own headphones. Each musician can adjust their own reverb, their own delay, and their own echo in their headphones. These are some of the mics we use for recording drums. We have the AEA stereo, AEA, sorry, stereo ribbon microphone hanging from the ceiling here. We spent a lot of time experimenting to get the microphone in the most ideal position. And this stereo ribbon mic, you can literally record a whole band in here just with this stereo ribbon mic. That's how gorgeous it sounds. We also use Shure SM57s, AKG 451s. We have the class original KM84 Neumann microphones suspended from the ceiling. We use for cymbals and overhead. We have used the D1112 for kick drum. Uh, we have all kinds of mic pre's that we use. We use the classic SSL mic pre's. Sometimes we put them in the room to get the absolute best fidelity. We actually put the mic pre close to the instruments so we get the best signal integrity. Come around down here, I'll show you some of the Neve mic pre's we use for the recording. These are the Neve 1073 mic pre's right here. Uh, these are really classic for recording drums, and we also use the Neve 1081 mic pre's uh, right over here for recording drums. We still use analog two-inch tape machines sometimes for bands. There's nothing like the sound of tape. We have a fully restored Studer A820, and this, this machine, um, we've been using this machine for 30 years now, and uh, this is an incredible sounding machine. Uh, it took me about a year to restore it. It's uh, got a lot of moving parts and a lot of parts. But uh, this is the machine that we use to record bands to analog tape to give that great analog tape sound, which we're still very passionate about. In my technical maintenance room, uh, this is pretty much the room that keeps this facility ticking along. I repair all the gear myself, mostly, and I restore all the gear myself, uh, whether it's a capacitor change or um, uh, something needs to be fixed or, you know, batteries changed or... Uh, resistors that are burnt out or a transistor that failed. It's all done here. I've got some great tools in my maintenance room. This is the Heiko D solder station where this sucks the solder right through the hole, right out of the hole. 
Uh, right now, I'm, I'm doing some custom modifications to the Mackie Big Knob. Uh, this is um, the in, inner guts of the Mackie Big Knob, and I'm actually uh, doing a little modification to it. We actually love this uh, monitor controller. We feel it's uh, really a great monitor controller for the money. So um, I modify them to make them sound even better. Um, that's another thing we do here. We do modify gear from time to time. But basically the Mix Palace is a combination of what we felt was the best gear made over the last 60 years in the audio business. So we've essentially collected every piece of gear that we thought was really a great piece of gear we have at this facility. And most of our gear is not modified uh, except for a few pieces. But uh, yeah, this is basically the room where I do all the maintenance and repair. Kind of like a dying art these days. <laughs>